Hello Pantsers, this video comes to you in, I think, approximately six parts. Some of them might meld together, so let's just get started because I've been away for a month and I've missed a lot of things. Conversation one that I've missed was feeling dumber as you get older. So I'm one of those kids that was raised to believe I am inherently smart. Like, that's just the way it is. Whether I want it or not, I am smart because my entire family is smart and just genetically I've, I've got, got a good brain up here. And whether I use that brain or not is on me. Um, so I'll never feel dumb, I don't think. I'll never feel like the processing power up here is lacking. But the flip side of that is I feel like my personality is lacking. Like not, not my intellectual academic ability. That will always be there. What is barring me from accessing my full intellectual ability is what most people would call their self, their identity, you know? Um, whatever has happened over my teenagerhood to my personality, that's just stopped me from being able to keep up with honors classes. Um, it's, it's not because I can't process it, it's because I'm really sensitive and touchy-feely now and I just can't go to classes like I used to. So that's, that's a variation on that feeling, but I still feel you on that. Um, speaking of not going to classes, I haven't been for the past week, um, which is a prime example of why I feel less capable than I used to because in Eastview, in middle school, I could pull like three all-nighters in a row and have bad week upon bad week upon bad week and I could still go to classes and write entire essays the night before they were due. And I could just make myself do that because it needed to be done. No longer, it would appear. Um, because now I have half a day's worth of classes and their regular stream and I can't even get out of bed for those. So something has happened and I feel, I guess in some way dumber because I've forgotten how to function. On to lighter news, I got into art school. Some of you might have already seen it if you are on Tumblr or Twitter or Facebook and know me on those platforms, but for those of you that I don't have on any other social media, I'm telling you now. I got into Emily Carr School of Art and Design in Vancouver, so assuming I can pull my act together and graduate high school, that's where I'll be in September. And it was pretty much like getting into real life Hogwarts. Like, actually, seriously, I built it up that much. But despite getting that letter two weeks ago, I still spent the last week not going to class. So, mental illness sucks, is my point. Sometimes there are things that happen that you think will be a turning point, and it's just not that clean and tidy in real life. And if I recall correctly, I think pretty much everyone on this channel struggles with some sort of mental health issue or another, whether that be bipolar or anxiety or depression of any form. Um, I just want to say congratulations for getting up in the morning, for getting up this morning specifically, because that's really hard. And maybe I should just make a poster and we can all print it out and stick it up on our mirrors because it needs to be said more often. Every day is just, you gotta kinda sit yourself down and say, today I'm going to do well. And I know for me, a lot of days that just doesn't pan out. So for you guys, when that does happen, congrats. That's huge. Moving on to part four, I have not read Emma at all. I have not been reading anything at all, so don't take it personally, you guys. I'm still watching it on YouTube, so feel free to keep talking about it as it updates, because I don't care about spoilers, and I've probably already seen it. And one more conversation that I feel like has kind of been beaten to death, but I'm gonna bring up one more thing, one more point, one more side of it. Shipping! 
So from what I see of the shipping community um, and from the ships that I ship, I would say it's not just about the characters. It's not just about looking at it within the fictional universe because it has very real real life implications for a lot of people. The ships that I endorse and the people I know who ship and just the commentary that I usually see around shipping, it's not only wanting those characters to be happy. That's that's what inspires it in a lot of ways. That's what inspires the passion, but it's also about demanding and fulfilling the need for better, more inclusive media. Because we can't help it when we see mainstream media, um, which is better advertised and has more money backing it, and in a lot of ways, to a lot of people, is just really good. We can't help falling in love with the characters in mainstream media, but because it's mainstream, it's so difficult for so many people on the internet to find someone to fully identify with. For instance, a lot, like, a, a huge faction of shipping culture and a lot of the ha-ha jokes around shipping is that there's a lot of gay ships. There's also a lot of lesbian ships. There's polyamorous ships. There are bro teepees, of course, and there will always be a strong, strong following of the platonic soulmate. But I, I guess what I'm trying to say is that shipping for a lot of people is a way to get closer to the characters that they love and a way to right maybe what they feel is a wrong in the universes that they love. They want to see more variety in the way that people love each other and I mean one of the ways we can't escape our societal priming is that romantic love is sold to us as the ultimate. So in kind of a search for the furthest that we can push human compassion, we push it towards unconventional structures of romantic relationships. And as a social movement, I think it's kind of awesome. I like that fans are not just kind of mindlessly consuming what's spoon-fed to them. It warms my heart. Anyways, this is a seven minute video, so I'm gonna sign off. DFTBA, you guys. Um, and have a really nice day.